Hi, one of my very favorite formulas, especially in gases, the ideal gas law. So here we have it, PV equals NRT. Sometimes people will use the nickname PIVNERT, PIVNERT for the ideal gas law. Um, here is the special power, the superpower of the ideal gas law, right there. N, N stands for moles, which means we can mathematically relate amount of substance to pressure, volume, and temperature. That is powerful. We can use it in stoichiometry, and we can use it standalone all over the place uh, with, with gases. So let's label everything with units. Okay, I'm going to start with R, and this is significant. R dictates every other unit. R is called the gas constant. Now you're going to use the gas constant um, in a couple of places in chemistry. You're going to use it related to energy, a delta G, um, and you're also going to use it in gases. Um, so you'll, when you see R, you'll actually see a list of different values depending on units. Here is the unit for the gas constant when we're using the ideal gas law. It is going to be ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. Now, you might be looking at a list of R values. Here's how you know when to use this one. If you're dealing with gases, you've got to pick the value that has ATM, okay? If you're using energy, like a delta G, then you're going to use the joules, the joules. So that's how you decide is, you'll say, okay, what, what am I using this for? Think gases, okay, um, gases, my unit for gases includes pressure ATM. That's how you'll work your way through which unit you choose. Now, the value of this is 0 0.0821. 0 point, and if you look up on a chart, you could even go a couple more decimal places. Um, for this, I'm going to use the, the three decimal place, or excuse me, the three sig figs um, for a, a general level class. Um, okay, so this, there you have it, 0 0.0821 ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So let's label everything else and we will attach the appropriate unit to that variable. So P is going to be pressure and based on our gas constant, pressure has to be in ATM. We have to have that in ATM. So if it's millimeters of mercury, you're converting it to ATM. V is going to be volume. And look at our gas constant, we can see that volume has to be in liters. Now, you can see right off, this will dictate every other unit. So if you're not sure what unit you need, look at the gas constant. It will tell you, if you're given mills, look at the gas constant, I go, oh wait, I've gotta convert that to liters. So, so important, you have to have the right units. Um, N, okay, here's the superpower of the ideal gas law, it's moles. That is the mole. So it allows us to use amount of substance. So if you're given grams, you just use the molar mass of the periodic table, convert it to moles, and baby, you can use the ideal gas law. T, of course, stands for temperature. Temperature. And temperature always, in everything we do in gases, we have to use Kelvin. We've got to use Kelvin. Um, Let's see, there was one other thing that I wanted to tell you. So, so important. Every once in a while, I'll see students take this and try and use it with solids or liquids. This is the ideal gas law. You can only use this law for gases. Only use this law for gases. Okay, so there's the rundown on the ideal gas law. Go ahead and watch the next set of uh, videos with practice how to apply and use the ideal gas law. Okay, good work. Have a great day. Thanks.